Hello, thank you so much for joining. Uh, today we have Lefris Vosmas with us. He's an open source enthusiast, a space technology enthusiast, and he has dedicated his life improving the field of space and technology. So thank you so much for joining. And for those who don't know, Cosmas will be our keynote speaker at Academy 2023. And before we start, we really want to know what which inspired me, or uh, this person inspired me, or I have a role model. I was a kid, I was at high school. What's your story? Uh, so uh, to be honest, uh, space has always been a uh, um, an inspiration um, as a kid, uh, and uh, I always uh, looked upon uh, uh, projects about uh, new probes, uh, Hubble telescope, uh, you name it. And, but the thing that uh, actually m made it possible for me to be really inspired and to participate in, in uh, uh, this organization was that, uh, and uh, being a founding member, was that uh, the most inspiration I drew was from the work done by fellow open source projects. Uh, Okay, this one, Knu Links, another. Um, Mozilla is, uh, which I've volunteered to in the past, uh, were fundamental for making it possible for me to work daily you know, on the one matter. And the other matter was that they powered me as a user. And uh, that was truly an inspiration to be involved uh with uh, open source projects i have to admit that uh, personal acquaintances my best friend uh, my brother-in-law are really involved in uh, uh, open source and introduced me to uh, linux uh, back in the early days in uh, 1999 but the thing is uh, that in general uh I'm inspired by the cooperation uh, we uh, open source uh, users and uh, developers and the community as a whole uh, drives open source projects together. So when you were a kid, do you, did you really want to work for space and you looked at the stars, you had a telescope? Was there something like this or but just by chance you started this working in this field? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, to some extent, um, it was chance, meaning that uh, uh, we all uh, were members of the same uh, open source community uh, we are members of the same hacker space that's devoted uh, in uh, open source software and uh, open source hardware and open source data the thing that uh, got me really involved into uh, that was uh, the participatory uh, way we started working we started working on a project uh, for NASA Space at Challenge. We coordinated together. We wanted to make something open. And then things started to fall in place. Uh, I, at first, I wasn't expected to be part of that thing, to be honest. Uh, I am not a very technical person. Um, I am uh, not a developer. Okay. Sure. Um, I am actually a sleep technologist by training, uh, mostly healthcare and research. And uh, it was a little bit, of, but I was always involved in uh, open source in uh, doing uh, blogging and uh, doing some journalist work uh, in the past. Uh, in, uh, 
um, Linux magazines and stuff like that. So I want to be involved in open source. The space came uh, as something uh, extra. Okay. So I was actually thinking that, you know, you, uh, space came before and then open source. So it's the other way around. Yes. Interesting. It's the other way around for me. For me. Yeah. Um, many persons on our team, uh, that's not always the same. But yeah, especially for me, open source came first. Okay. And uh, space came as the natural uh, progress of things. Mm, interesting. So. I'll change the question a bit then. If you are such an enthusiast for um, open source software, and what what was the reason that you were always so uh, pro of open source? Um, is there like something that you, when you started your career, uh, somebody told you about it, and you or you already knew about all of this? How did this happen? Okay, uh, it's a personal anecdote. But the thing is that I, had, uh, I have a great, uh, best friend that actually came one day and he said, you know something, dude, I got this DVD set uh, that has a operating system and you can actually give it to other people and they can use it and you can actually uh, make copies of it and uh, use it by yourself. Come on, really? Yes, it's called the uh, CSET at the time. And um, we started uh, trying to set up our uh, machines with that. Well, it was, the, it was 1999, 2000. Well, we were not, both of us, he's a medical doctor, I'm trained as a nurse. Oh, nice. So, yes, yes, I'm uh, actually uh, trained as an ICU nurse, formerly. Uh, so, um, we we're trying to figure out how we will set up our machines and how we will ever set up uh, X server, which was pretty complicated at the time, I have to admit. And, uh, yeah, the thing is that when we started discussing about it and discussing about the development process of uh, open source and free software. Uh, we got uh, pretty enthusiastic about the fact that people actually work together to develop it. And they work together with a set of rules and they work together with a set of licenses and these licenses are part of what empowers open source too. And that was, we were flabbergasted and uh, we're saying, hey, that, that's a pretty cool way of working together. So that's a pretty cool way of uh, making thing, uh, making progress to things. Of course, it has its uh, caveats of all things, but if you think about it, it's really interesting the way it's developed and uh, it's uh, really interesting that you can actually, at least for me, I could actually see the process. I could actually see uh, what I was using it was becoming useful release by release. Yeah. Which was at least interesting for me. That's true. To say the least. Yeah. So now just when you were saying something really interesting came up and you said that you, you are a nurse, right? You were a nurse. So from nursing to space, how did this happen? It's like really interesting. I wouldn't have yeah. thought, you know, to switching my careers all the way to a very different career field. So how did that happen? Okay. So um, I worked as a nurse and I'm trained as a nurse. And an intensive care unit nurse uh, by training. Uh, but I always had uh, a good knack for uh, computers. I always had uh, an interest to computers, an interest to the internet, uh, and it was a useful tool. 
So uh, at some time I started uh, working as a sleep technologist, which is kind of similar to being a nurse, but not exactly like that. And uh, then uh, while I was a sleep technologist, um, I wanted to try to get hands on with some uh, building a website, uh, things like that. And uh, I started uh, blogging about open source because I was really interested in that cooperational idea because coming from uh, healthcare, coming from uh, healthcare nowadays, you have to have cooperation in mind, you have to use standards, you have to use uh, open data to some extent, uh, and all that thing comes into you, I mean, uh, comes a daily part of your life. And, uh, it was the time that uh, Wikipedia started uh, being uh, something very um, useful and um, popular, and uh, Linux started being uh, more easy to use, and uh, all the transition from KD to 3 to KD4 was also at that time. Yes. Uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, being a part of um, um, saying the um, describing the news about it, and I had the chance to work at the local Linux magazine to cover the news. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I was starting being involved into open source communities a little bit more actively. And then uh, when we started building a physical place where people would work on open source projects, uh, not only online, but have an actual office, an actual desk, an actual um, laboratory that they could work, uh, things started coming along a little bit more uh, efficiently, if you'd like. And uh, the chance came up to be part of that community, uh, being part of the Space Foundation, uh, which for me is um, one of the most unexpected things I could imagine, because I wouldn't ever imagine myself holding a satellite that got in orbit. Uh, I can hold. I, I can put it in my mind yeah. still now, because uh, it was a little bit out of this world, and it is. Sometimes when I'm talking about it, I uh, understand that it's a little bit weird being nurse and holding satellites in your, on your hand. Come on, <laughs> it is weird. So. We were talking about the career change right now from your nursing career to the space field what do you think has been the most challenging task for you like you would say that okay this is something which i have done i wouldn't have been uh, it would have been possible for me to do it so one thing that you think i'm sure there would have been a lot of challenges but one thing you think okay this was the most difficult thing, difficult thing i have done uh I have to admit that uh, the, my personal uh, thing that I've said, okay, now we are, I'm out of this uh, lead, was when we uh, had to negotiate stuff with the uh, European Space Agency and uh, other entities because uh, you have to uh, take into account that uh, building a Liber Space Foundation, building uh, the Liber Space Foundation is one thing. Uh, having the Liber Space uh, Foundation being part of uh, um, um, the actual space uh, community and space industry is another thing. It was much more difficult. It's, it is 
more effort. You expect it to be more demanding and being more out of your league than uh, being part of uh, even open source communities. Because at least in open source communities, people will guide you, you have a lot of documentation lying around. It's uh, not the same. Uh, and the uh, space is, uh, by tradition, if you like, uh, a more um, closed uh, area of uh, industries. It uh, used to be only the privilege of uh, big states and uh, big government organizations and uh, defense contractors. Yeah. Uh, now it's becoming a little bit more open to um, corporations or even startups, but it's still that it's demanding. And it, uh, it was actually great when we uh, delivered the uh, uh, satellites to the United States of America, and. Uh, it was really interesting to see your satellite uh, coming out of the International Space Station or even listen your satellites through a uh, uh, Satnugzar uh, open source satellite ground station network. Interesting. So I really didn't want to touch uh, about the foundation, but because uh, it will be part of Academy Talk as well, but still, I really cool. want to know how Liberal Space Foundation was co-founded and was it something you were just discussing and it just came up or um, even though we have touched about the topic that how your career switch was, but specific, uh, um, specifically, if I would talk about the organization. so. Did you just, were you just sitting around and you were thinking about doing it or it just came up because there was an opportunity? So maybe just briefly, if we can talk about. So, yes, an opportunity came up. Uh, so we started building um, Satnox a while back as a team of people lying around in the hacker space and working together. And uh, the thing is that, uh, um, we actually had uh, um, applied for uh, to participate in uh, a Hacker Day Prize, which was a um, um, kind of a, um, a challenge that uh, would uh, give out around two hundred thousand uh, dollars to the first winner. Yeah. And uh, we were discussing whether or not we would win or not, or something like that. It was, uh, we never expected to win. So, uh, we won the oh, first time, and we got $200,000. At the time, around nine to ten people on the team, and you had to decide what you're gonna do. We're gonna split the money and say goodbye, or are we gonna build something together and be part uh, and continue to work on the project and continue to uh, do open source technologies? And the natural conclusion was that we are going to build something. And profit, and uh, we're gonna build it uh, focused on uh, delivering open source technologies in space. Either it's gonna be a ground station, or it's gonna be a satellite. We don't know. We we were not expecting it to be a satellite. To be honest, we will not say, "Ah, oh, yeah, you know, we're gonna work on with satellites in a few years." We're not sure about that. Uh, we weren't even sure about Satmux, uh, that would, it would be so um, um, uh, popular that it is right now. It's uh, the largest ground station network globally. Uh, but uh, things, came in, you know, things came in place and uh, open source, really, 
I say that a lot of times, and I will say it again, I will say it in my presentation, in my keynotes, and in personal notes. Open source by itself, it's a huge thing. It's a catalyst in whatever you do. Mm. So for me, uh, that played a great role. And um, since then, seven years have passed. No, eight. Hmm. Eight years have passed. And uh, you're here, still working and uh, still uh, doing stuff. That's a very inspiring story, actually. Like, I'm sure a lot of people would be inspired doing something, you know, some going out of your comfort zone and winning a competition. It's not easy. Uh, do you think that you were so pro of open source and while you're working in the space industry right now, uh, there are challenges and you face a backlash from proprietary softwares or you feel like, you know, because it's open source technology, you have to work way harder compared to if you would be using proprietary software. Uh, what's your opinion about it? Uh, I have to admit that uh, while I'm not an engineer, uh, talks that I have with our engineers and uh, people from the industry, the thing is that uh, at first I've seen that uh, people were skeptic, and that's understandable. Uh, people were used to um, proprietary solutions, and they were used to proprietary solutions because they were the only solutions they had. Yeah. And. Uh, there were some prior uh, initiatives and uh, smaller on other projects in the past uh, that uh, didn't deliver stuff. So uh, people were expecting uh, us to uh, be less uh, organized, maybe, or uh, um, I don't know. Uh, I think that uh, uh, when you say space and open source in the same uh, phrase, people look at you uh, with skepticism, and uh, that's understandable. Um, and uh, yeah, we did have some. We. We did some have some uh, stories about people saying, uh, you know, we have to check that because, I mean, come on, what's that? What are you trying to prove? Um, uh, but the thing is that uh, nowadays our organization has a um, uh, cooper um, uh, partnerships with. Uh, large organizations, uh, even uh, for-profit companies uh, that um, do recognize that uh, open source is a solution and it can fit their own uh, needs. To the extent they expect to uh, like whatever they can from it. But yeah, that, 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 that's the story. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, for many industries, that was the story altogether. I mean, we were not expecting uh, open source to be a thing in um, the automotive industry, but Genevieve is there. Yeah. Uh, we didn't expect. Um, KD to run on uh, gaming machines and consoles, but Steam Deck is there. Yes. And people are using it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, things change slowly. Uh, I, I'm generally uh, using uh, several uh, KD um, apps around. Uh, I'm mostly a KD user. And plasma user on my uh, uh, machine. So, yeah, in general, I use uh, a lot of KDE stuff. 
to the extent that it comes a little bit, oh, you know, the, that way you can do that with KD, you know. It's a little bit unknown. So you Especially said for my wife. <laughs> you have used uh, KDE products, and um, there's one astronomical uh, application, K Stars. Have you yes. ever got a chance to use yes. that? Of course, K Stars. Yeah. Everybody has used K Stars, and uh, everybody who is at least interested in space a little bit more than your zone has used K-Stars, other uh, um, people that are using it uh, with a uh, simple manual telescope like me, because I'm cheap, or uh, other colleagues of mine that are a little bit more uh, into using, ah, yes, I'm going to use this robotic thing that does everything by itself, and, and hey, you open K-Stars, yes, but you don't know music. Uh, but yeah, uh, K-Stars is really great great piece of software thank you i think i'm going to pass this to the developers um that you think that it has the potential and we are talking about the space industry right now do you think that uh, there are different challenges compared to uh, other fields like you know every industry has its own challenges and do you feel that there are certain challenges of uh, your field like for example um, when we talk about open source then we have challenges of um, going up what is happening in the market right you have to be always up with the game so what do you think are the challenges currently in the space industry um i believe that uh, especially nowadays space industry um is in crossroads if you like uh because let's be honest uh, we are seeing uh, several uh, big uh, companies startups corporations here there that um, are trying to deliver stuff using huge amounts of funding and uh, some of them manage to do so I'm not. Um, the space industry used to be a little bit more static than that a few years ago. Um, things changed a lot after SpaceX and after many companies came along yeah. and changed the way things are done. Uh, but I believe that. Uh, the trend that I would like to see, and I believe that it's more normal to see in the future, is transparency, openness, even collaboration with uh, open source projects, uh, because uh, that actually makes business sense, yeah. and it's uh, actually uh, more ethical way to do things if you ask me that's true so um i don't know if you know about our project we have this um environment project which is called kd eco and when we talk about environment do you feel that um, space industry is doing something which would help us in the future for the climate change or currently you think of something which is uh trying to move towards that goal I believe that the uh, uh, space industry has a lot of potential to provide real data, yeah. open data, and uh, reliable data um, to the scientific community. This is really important uh, for me and the way I see it, because if we have, if we start talking about climate change, which we have to, in my opinion, uh, we have to have open data, even if we could have open sensors and open uh, software that will uh, take that data and, output and provide output, that would be amazing. 
because that's where, that's the way you can actually track your data. And that's where you can actually be sure that the impact you're making is proper. Or that the hole you dug yourself into is that deep. Yeah. If you you have to know these things and you have to be sure that what you know is 100 percent sure that's true that that's a long way to uh i believe that that's the way we could actually uh being uh the space industry could be impactful in uh um our environment and uh, i believe that in my humble opinion that's the only way we could actually be impactful because let's be honest uh space has a lot of um has an environmental impact minimal to under the under industries like airlines mm -hmm. but it has an environmental impact but the data we can get uh are really important and we have to be really aware for uh, about this and we have to be, uh, be really independent about the data we get yeah. Meaning that today we get data from NASA, tomorrow? Uh, well, I hope we will. Yeah. I trust our fellows in NASA that we will, but yeah. So we were just talking about environment and how um, things are evolving, right? So how do you see the future in the space industry? Do you think that things will be better or how? And um, also how the open source technology has been uh, favoring these things. So is there an advantage? We talked about challenges, right? But now if you talk about the positive things about that, how open source will actually help uh, in the future for the space industry. Yeah, I do believe that uh, space industry will change. uh in the future uh, i'm not sure about uh naming names and uh calling out uh companies that uh, will uh, actually uh disrupt uh, uh the technological paradigm uh but i do believe that uh, uh, i see several I think traditional big aerospace companies uh, starting slowly to be involved in open source. And uh, it's a long way till we have the paradigm we have in uh, servers and uh, the computers. That's a long way. Uh, but I do believe that in the future we will see more because it makes sense and let's be honest because uh, a lot of things might change uh, in making uh, open source a little bit uh, more orthological if you like I mean more um, simple and logical to work with uh, space. Uh, there are a lot of stuff that have done reinventing the wheel. Usually it's kind of normal because the space industry has a long tradition of being secret. And uh, this reinvention of the wheel Every time you build a new probe or any time you build a new satellite, it doesn't always make sense. It does sometimes, but it doesn't always make sense. And that, that will and must change. Yeah. So we spoke about open source. We spoke about what is happening in the future. So what do you think? How um, diversity? is being included in your organization because in the past space industry was a field which was very male dominated uh, do you yes. see that it is changing or 
it's, it's your organization doing something towards it? Uh, I have to admit that when we started the organization, it was almost like a men's club. Yeah. Let's be honest about it. Uh, it was uh, toys with toys and big rockets. Uh, well, smaller rockets, actually. But the thing is that uh, I really see nowadays, and uh, I was in the local hardware space the other day. There were just a couple of girls uh, working on a, um, an experiment uh, for our uh, ground facilities. And I was thinking, man, we are actually having people working together. And there are people that are young, uh, especially young uh, uh, girls that are working together in the same team with a lot of guys, and they're part of the team. They share the same jokes, they share the same uh, ideas, they share the same passion about stuff. And that's the important thing. Yes, they are different, of course but they share the same ideals and that's the important thing and if you have the same ideals the same and the or familiar technical background you can work your stuff out yeah. and it at least in our organization it needs a lot of work and uh, it needs a lot of uh, opportunities for people because let's face it being a male in a male dominated society in male dom in men male dominated occupations uh gives you a heads up to some extent at least for many people um it even gives you some uh, heads up if you are working in a female dominated uh, professions. I can be an attest to that. I know it does. Being a male nurse was actually better than being a female nurse while I was a nurse. So I know uh, that there are struggles there. Uh, and we want to be inclusive and focus on the technical excellence of people because we are building satellites we are building a ground station networks we don't care about how people identify themselves on the dangers or what they do we didn't we care about how good the stuff is and how good the licensing is Everything else, yeah, we will support you. We will be there and uh, you, you're coming at least, uh, and that, that, that's the matter in most open source communities, in my humble opinion, at least. But we are here, we will uh, help you, we will uh, give you whatever resources you need to do what you need to do. Um, and uh, that's the best thing that people can actually do, in my humble opinion. Maybe we could do better, and I think we could, but um, that's the status right now. I hope in the future you'll see more people, uh, more people in my position being female. I hope so. I really do. I'm so glad to know uh, this. Well, I, I really hope so for uh, Actually, I really hope so because uh, I'm a father of a young girl right now. She's really young. Uh, she, she's such young that, uh, okay, you can't actually take it into account. But, okay, she enjoys computer she enjoys playing with my keyboards mm. uh, yeah 
I don't, I wouldn't like to see her uh, struggling to uh, prove herself. I agree. Uh, an engineer has to struggle to prove themselves every day, whether they are male or female. A female engineer maybe has to prove herself twice or more. So you just spoke about your daughter and we are talking about um, how younger people, when they're coming to a field, they have very different challenges. Uh, do you think somebody who maybe you you are an inspiring story, right? And somebody who's going to watch this interview and will be inspired and want to join the space industry. What advice would you give to that younger person who would like to join the industry? Um, I believe that the first thing uh, people should uh, uh, take into account is that uh, focus on their skills. Um, how things should be done and things should be done by the book in the space industry and then they should focus on their own selves and uh, believing that uh, what they do is actually something that can be done um, it's a challenge of course um, most people that come into the space industry, either engineers or uh, people with a managerial role like me, um, see the challenges, see that oh, tough. I'm going to negotiate with the European Space Agency. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, you will do it. It's doable. Um, and uh, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in what you know. The best thing you can do is know as much as you can. How you can know as much as you can? Open source solution because you can know the hell out of it. Yes. So um, that was a great advice, but um, I know that at least for me when uh, i'm working because i'm also working from home there's one thing that you know keeps me motivated so for you if you were to give an advice to someone who is working or who's planning to work in the space space industry what motivates you and what should actually they follow that would keep them motivated um i will be honest with you uh i believe that uh, uh and it's part of what we believe at as uh, an organization actually um, is that um, we believe in that space uh, is for the betterment of all mankind and uh, thinking that what you do might in the future actually help someone it could be uh, catalytic to uh, what we do. Thank you so much. And um, let's talk about something now about, is there any upcoming project or any book you're writing or podcast that viewers should you know look forward to? Uh, currently, uh, we don't have uh, any plans of, uh, uh, I, I certainly don't have uh, any plans of uh, actually uh, uh, writing something or uh, doing a podcast, but the thing is that uh, what we really want to do is build, build more satellites, build more ground stations, and build more open source solutions. And for us, and for me personally, uh, this is uh, the most thing, uh, the most uh, inflation thing we can provide. Uh, I know that for many people, this sounds a little bit out of what they do or what they would like to see or what they would like to consume. But uh, for us as an organization, uh, 
putting out uh, technologies out there that are useful and uh, could be used uh, for uh, for other people. That's the most important thing we can do. Uh, I know it sounds a little bit, uh, but yeah. That's interesting. You're right. Uh, but, um, you know, this is a weird kind of question, but whenever you meet uh, palmist and astrologist, you have, okay, what is happening in the future? So is there anything which uh, in the end you would like to say that, okay, these are the coming astro astrological phenomena uh, looking forward in the next month, you know, if there are some predictions, do you want to share something? If It's exciting. Uh, I have to admit that, uh, although I don't believe at all in astrology, um uh i think that uh, the most exciting thing uh, i can think of is uh building a, a more uh, solutions uh, or space maybe a constellation of open source um uh, uh, satellites will uh, come soon and uh, uh, will actually uh, help people uh, find out more about uh, the invisible uh, stuff that are happening around us. Okay, that's too much. Um, so other than um, now we have spoken about work and space industry, is there something which uh, you are doing other than work? Like maybe you like to read books or you have some interest in sports? Any hobbies? Oh, yes. Ah, uh, well, first and foremost, my hobby was around here and passing mm -hmm. by, and was trying to mess with my uh, laptop. That was my kid. Um, and uh, yeah, um, well, uh, I do play the piano. I do read books, and um, uh, when I have the time, uh, I do take uh, long work or uh, I used to go to museums and uh, galleries uh, in the past, but uh, when COVID came, when my daughter came, well, we will do it again. Of course, things have changed a lot after COVID. And, um, and we have already spoken about that, you know, space industry was not something which you had in mind in, when you started your career, but do you have a favorite space movie or a book which you say that, okay, this is something which is very interesting and if somebody wants to read and is interested in space should read it or watch a movie? Okay. Um, of course, I do have uh, several space, uh, favorite space movies, series or stuff like that. Uh, I'm a known Trekkie. Yeah. Uh, I love the track. Uh, mostly because uh, they use the uh, L cars uh, interface, which is fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, they used to have uh, something similar. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, um, I loved uh, a book actually. Uh, from Charles Tross, uh, that people can actually download and read because Charles Tross is a cool guy. And uh, it's called the uh, Acceleranto. It's a really interesting book and it's really nice and uh, has some interesting hard science fiction that's uh, always nice to read. Thank you so much. And uh, I totally suggest that uh, people could uh, check it out. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I think it was really okay. interesting to talk to you. Before we end, I have one final question. So you know that Academy is happening in July and hopefully you will be there. So one teaser, if you would like to give about your talk so that people would come and enjoy your keynote. Well, a teaser uh, from my presentation, I would say um, 
going from um, down to F to Orbit with uh, free software and open hardware. But mostly. It. Thank you so much. And it was really Thank nice you. talking to you. I hope you enjoyed it too. And we are. I did. Thank you. And uh, we are really looking forward to your talk at Academy and uh, hope to see you in person as well. And um, thank you so much once again. I'm really forward, uh, looking forward to uh, visit Thessaloniki and uh, participate in Academy. Uh, and I'm really, really, really looking forward to uh, say thank you to the people that are building KD because it's been uh, my main, my only uh, desktop environment since 1999. Wow. Thank you, people, for that. And I hadn't ever had the chance to actually say thank you to everybody because it really it's been part of my daily life. Thank you so much. I think uh, obviously a lot of developers will watch this video, but then not. I'm going to, I think I'll make sure that everybody knows about it. And I think these kind words are the things which motivate them to continue working. And thank you so much once again. I will really thank you. Uh, have a great day. I'm looking forward to see you in uh, Academy. Yes. I'll stop recording now. Yeah.